You loved him on the chat room, the text line, and much more. College Football Matrix joins us at CFB Matrix on 365 Sports. How you doing, Dave? I am doing great. I am doing great. The phone won't stop ringing. Man, you guys have no idea what's coming down the pipe with the hurricane of coaching changes this year. It is stupid right now. Yeah, it is. Uh, 70 plus million dollars in dead money already with 12 coaches. 500 plus million the last, what, 10, 12 years. And it's only going to get more and more as well. And then you have big boy programs, LSU, Washington, obviously uh, with USC opening up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge amount of churn. And man, if you're one of these, one of these teams that you know, is not upper echelon. It's kind of like, well, I guess we got to wait for the dust settle on everybody else because, you know, if you're if you're trying to replace guys, and let's say you're at the bottom end uh, of of college football, uh, you got to wait till everything else clears and see what happens. But you keep keep an eye out. There's going to be a lot of teams that super upgrade their staffs that are being patient with this and letting things come to them. Dave, uh, do you expect to see maybe Miami open up or Florida or some of the other ones in the next couple weeks? Uh, You know something? Miami maybe, right? You know, I I think I saw something on Twitter like they had had Vegas betting odds on who's going to get run next. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. And and part of me is like, you know, I know enough about most of these guys. I could probably make a really educated bet right now. (laughs) But... um, you know, with, with Diaz, I, uh, obviously with the AD turnover, um, the, the, the odds of him getting let go went up just exponentially. We all know that. That's, that's the way it is. Uh, the, the performance of Miami has been, well, at least the first half of the, half of the season, was beyond deplorable. It was horrid. horrid. Uh, and, and they tried to rally back a little bit. But is he going to be let go before the new AD comes in? No. I, I really doubt that. I think that'll be probably the AD's first job is to make a decision on that. So unless they, you know, unless that AD position is filled really quick at Miami, and it sounds like it is not, I don't think we're going to get a quick turnaround time on understanding if Diaz is going to get another year now, which is which is great from a recruiting standpoint because. You know, National Signing Day is next month, and if you don't fire Diaz till February, you say, "Oh, well, we just, you know, we just had to wait till we had a new AD." Sorry about that. <laughs> so well, there's there's the plus side there, I guess. Um, Florida, the math to me doesn't work right now uh, because they just let the DC go, they just let the offensive line coach go. Um, seems kind of silly to turn around after all of that the shuffling, turn around and let the head coach go, but. Uh, college football is weird. Uh, Gator fans expect an awful lot right now from a team that was 18th in recruiting uh, when Dan took over from McIlwain. McIlwain had buried the talent level of Florida and the development of Florida. So uh, I think the expectations are, are sky high at Florida when they shouldn't be. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. I guess we got to just see how these last few games go for Florida because they do have, what, uh, Missouri which defensively is a punching bag and Florida state, which has improved quite a bit. Um, so I'm not buying or selling on, on Mullen right now. I think Diaz is just a matter of time. So Dave, uh, Baylor football got a big win over Oklahoma last weekend. Uh, Dave Aranda is one of those hot names that's swirling around right now. I mean, he's been mentioned with the LSU job, the USC job, now the Washington job, and it seems like every other job in between. Uh, your thoughts on, on Baylor's win over the Sooners, but also the amount of, of talk surrounding Dave Aranda and the way he's being viewed in this carousel. Oh my God, did Aranda and Roberts just shut them down this weekend or yeah. what? Yeah. Holy crap, they kicked their ass. <laughs> that had to be so much fun as a Baylor fan. I mean, seriously, because what, two, three years ago, it, you know, the program bottom of the barrel, right? Offensive and defensive scoring efficiency was shot. Now you have one of the most balanced football teams in college football, and it's just amazing. Now, Washington, that's cute. Virginia Tech, that's cute, okay? I mean, if, if, if you're Dave Aranda and you're considering Baylor or LSU or USC, why don't we just stop right there, okay? I mean, that's, that's enough because if he ain't going to USC, <laughs> he ain't going to Washington. 
And if he ain't going to LSU, he certainly as heck ain't going to Virginia Tech, which Fuente just cratered on recruiting and development. So, you know, it, obviously LSU, he's got ties to LSU. He's got ties to USC. And now he has ties to Baylor. I, I think that those are the only three things that have to be considered in this situation. Um, can you be nervous as a Baylor fan? Sure. The guy's done awesome. I mean, he turned the program around. It was in the impact offensively and defensively. I'd be nervous too, uh, but we'll just, I guess you're just going to have to wait and see what happens, which, which way these want to go. But I, I would not entertain listening to any other program being uh, a possible for Dave Aranda if LSU and USC are that serious. All right. So last night, uh, as you probably had pretty much like clockwork, the college football standings were released week number three. Uh, we were always focused on looking at the top. You kind of taught us two weeks ago not to look at the top, but look at the bottom uh, with uh, the teams that kind of help cushion or prop up those at the top. I noticed Mississippi State with three top 25 wins moved in. Uh, I thought Kansas State should be one of those, although I've been, and, and rightfully so, they don't have a quality win or a top 25 win. They might after this weekend. What happened at the bottom of the top 25 day that caught your attention? Oh, dude, you are a rock star. <laughs> you're, oh, that is awesome that you're paying attention to that. And that's exactly the first thing that I saw. Because when we modeled this, guess who was 25? K-State. Who does K-State prop up? Anybody who wins out the Big 12, right? Mm -hmm. Mississippi State was modeled what? 26, baby. Right there. And so, so, so me and my colleague are like, we're arguing back and forth. I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, which one is it going to be? Which one are they going to favor? And you, and you look forward to, okay? Part of this is who are they going to lose to down the road? And so you look at Mississippi State. If they put Mississippi State in – and somehow Mississippi State is able to beat Ole Miss. Both teams are easily in the top 25 at the end. So, yeah, we had K, we had K State. Look, I had K State with, with two quality wins uh, after last weekend. We had them at 7 and 3. Uh, their strength of schedule was 26, which is slightly better than Mississippi State. Their game control, their margin of victory was much better than Mississippi State. And Mississippi State, I know they got three top 25 wins, but they. They also have a bad loss. They lost to a sub-500 team. You know, they lost to Memphis. Good board. You know, so we did have K-State there. They put Mississippi State in. It's, you know, it's kind of tomato, tomato. But I really feel that, um, well, as, as we've talked about, this this kind of puts Mississippi State in the driver's seat to be in the top 25. But I think, I don't know who has Kansas State, who they have left on the schedule, but 9-3 and three is probably going to get them in the top 25 at the end of the season. They play Baylor at home this Saturday evening, and then they play at Texas. Okay, so guess who, guess who Mississippi State playing this weekend? Tennessee Valley School of Dentistry. That's a W, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, come on. You know, so I mean, you got a forward thing. This is one of the, the, one of the good things that the committee is really good with is being patient. They forward think, they look at the whole schedule, because if you put K-State or Mississippi State in there and one of them loses the next week, you kind of look bad, right? So if, if you had a choice between those two, you're going to go, okay, Mississippi State's going to blow out this FCS team, and Kansas State probably is going to lose to Baylor, should lose to Baylor. Why would we put Kansas State in there only to take them out the next week when we can look a little bit smarter and put Mississippi State in there right now and they're going to win and stay in? That is probably the depth of the logic right there. Davis, that uh, Tennessee Valley Dentist School of Dentistry, <laughs> that the mighty molars that you yeah. got? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh man nothing like a tomato can in november baby <laughs> yeah, right. they all count the same uh, yeah all right what kind of um wizardry does cincinnati have to pull to 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 legitimately land at four or really oh. it doesn't they, they're if they win they need wizardry to happen kind of around them don't they Dude, they need Gozer the Gozerian to show up and choose, and choose the form of the Destroyer, man. I, I mean, seriously, it, it, it has to be a train wreck for them. Now, I'm, I'm biased, okay? I'm totally biased. I probably said this last week. I don't think Cincinnati's schedule, people go, oh, well, they just played the schedule that, they, that, that they're dealt. Yeah. You know something? If Georgia was given that schedule, they'd win 56 to nothing every damn game. 
not barely beat Tulane. Um, so it's all biased that they get to play Kansas uh, essentially nine times, Indiana and Notre Dame, and be considered a, a top four team. Uh, but that being said, even at the end of this, at the most, they are going to have four quality wins. Four, okay? Georgia already has five right now. You know, uh, Michigan already has four right now. Uh, and, and I don't think ooh, may, they might get one more top 25 game against, let's say, Houston in the AAC title game. Uh, but their strength of schedule is at 123rd today. They played nothing. They played nobody. And they haven't controlled the games very well given that schedule. So I, I'm of the belief in the numbers that they need a lot of two lost teams, a lot of two lost teams uh, in order to uh, get in there to get destroyed by Georgia. Dave, uh, there was a lot of talk uh, about Michigan and Michigan State and where they were placed due to due to the head to head. I mean, they're right there next to each other at six and seven. But Michigan State behind Michigan, even though they got the the win there, you got Ohio State perched at four right now, and uh, obviously you got a couple big games coming up. Ohio State playing both Michigan and Michigan State. So, your thoughts on the Big Ten, how these teams are positioned, and, and what you think the committee was looking at? Uh, I think they were looking at exactly what you said. They're all going to play each other, so why move them around? Sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, again, this is what what we're talking forward thinking, Mm -hmm. looking ahead, because we we all know that if any one of those three teams wins out and beats whoever, Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game, that team is in. Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, it doesn't matter which one it is. So why not just go, ah, let them decided on the field before we start moving things around very much. Now, personally, in the numbers, when we modeled it, we had Michigan over Cincinnati. And I was kind of surprised that Gary Barter came out and was like, oh, we have Cincinnati a solid five. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I mean, since Cincinnati is 123 strengths of schedule, I know know Michigan has one loss, but Cincinnati is 123 strengths of schedule. Michigan's at 49. Cincinnati has two quality wins. They've beaten two teams above 500. Michigan has beaten four. Cincinnati has one top 25 win. So does Michigan. Michigan's game control margin of victory with a 49 strength of schedule is the same as Cincinnati. There is nothing about their resumes that are equal or in favor of Cincinnati. It's all Michigan. So I don't don't really understand other than just letting them play it out because Michigan obviously is going to be an underdog to Ohio State. They'll lead after three quarters and blow it. Right? I mean, it's just that's the way it works for Michigan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they tried to do it last week. They did it against Michigan State. Um, Michigan State did surprise me, though, because I felt uh, I felt strongly that Notre Dame had a better schedule. They were ranked above them, I believe. Well, were they not? I don't think they were. Notre Dame easily has a better schedule. Oklahoma State has a better resume. 43rd in strength of schedule. Michigan State's at 92. Uh, Oklahoma State has more quality wins. They have better game control. I, the, the top 12 teams, actually the top 15, the only two that were out of place was Michigan not above Cincinnati and Michigan State, wherever the hell they put them. I don't know where it was, but it was weird because I actually felt Michigan State could be 10. Wake Forest resume is equal to Michigan State. So of all the teams, people say, well, who do you think they really flexed on the most? I think in the top 15, unequivocally, Michigan State – Feel, is the only one that really feels out of place. But like we just talked about, <laughs> dude, two weeks, it's all going to be settled. Dave, did I hear, did we hear Gary Barta last night say that other than watching the games and then like, like okay, well, maybe other than watching the game, isn't that what it's about is watching the damn games? No, it's never about watching the games. Wow. Why would it be about watching the game? What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> no, but no, but just seriously, let's talk through this, right? We get, we have three major ranking polls: playoff committee, AP poll, and the coaches poll, right? Okay. Now, how many people that are part of all those ranking systems have both the time and the expertise to watch thirty teams? in two days and adequately evaluate all of them equally. Nobody does. Oh dear. It's God. a farce. Yeah. It's false. You know, I, I get it. You watch it. You watch Baylor, Oklahoma. Baylor kicked the crap out of them. Mm-hmm. Beat the crap out of them. Did you see that eye pass? They kicked the crap out of them. 
But how do you assign kick the crap out of them to 30 teams? You don't. It's an emotional feeling. It's a narrative. And it's false. The eye test doesn't exist. It only exists in our mind because it makes us feel good. Because you watch that team and you think your team is better just because you watched them. But unless you have the time and expertise, which nobody does, it's just a, it's just a way to try to evaluate or reason why somebody's there. But it's not an even way of ranking teams, which is really what the committee is supposed to be about. Dave Bartu, CFB Matrix on Twitter. Dave Bartu with us last two weeks ago and also today here on 365 Sports. Dave, Craig, Dave you mentioned them, but what are your thoughts on Oklahoma State? Um, I am – well, I, I think they're right there with fringe number four. They're right there. Um, Kansas State probably is not going to be top 25. That's going to hurt. Um, they're going to be – if they beat Oklahoma, uh, that'll give them another top 25 win. Here's this problem that we've always said, even with the Big, Big 12, even when they got to the championship game, the committee is – even if Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma twice, they're not going to get credit for two top 25 wins. They're going to get one. Okay, They'll get two quality wins. So they're going to be Oklahoma State's right on the fringe. So obviously they need to win out. They have to have Georgia beat Alabama. Okay, so those two things have to happen. Now, if Oregon loses or Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State all end up with two losses, it opens the door a crack. I am not shutting the door on Oklahoma State right now because there's just enough room where I think I think the dominoes can fall easier in favor of Oklahoma State winning out and getting in than Cincinnati winning out and getting in. Dave, thank you for uh, uh, always clarifying. It's oh, always great. Learning a lot along the way, even at my old age, about what matters. And, and, and the, the part about the bottom of the, the poll was something that I took out of what we did with you a couple of weeks ago. And you're right, it's impossible. We can, we can watch all the highlight shows, but those are just highlight shows of 10, 12, 15, or 20 games. But to sit down and watch a full game, I, I'm lucky if I watch one. And that's the one I'm covering. That's the one I'm covering, yeah. They have to have a framework, right? The committee, they got six hours to rank 25 teams. You have to go in with a framework on how they're going to do this. Otherwise, it's never going to work. Could so to you, me, the eye test is an excuse. Could you please become their spokesperson, or would you ever want to do that because it's just like a battering ram of publicity? Oh, I would just piss people off, dude. Yeah, yeah. I would just, you know how mad I'd make people? Because uh, I would just be do blunt. Now, yeah. Right? I'd be blunt force trauma. <laughs> just tell them, the way, tell them the way it is. But I do appreciate... Uh, you allowing me to come on and because we're, really what I'm trying to do is set the framework and provide clarity to maybe how things actually work, you know, and, and try to get rid of some of the narratives and focus on what really we're looking at big picture, whether it's the playoffs or coaching or anything like that. So I really appreciate you guys having me on. All right, Dave, we'll be following you again. CFP Matrix on Twitter as well. Dave Bartu, College Football Matrix with us as he breaks down truth serum. Raymond was upset with a couple of things. And I, he's, he's, here's the thing. He understands the system. He almost like helped invent part of the system about how they go about their business. He is the one that is kind of almost uh, forecasting What's going to happen the day of, the night of, or maybe that Michigan State was too high, and it might make you mad if you're Michigan State, but why? Or that Cincinnati has no chance in a snowball's chance in hell, uh, even if all hell breaks loose around him. He's telling the truth. Sometimes that hurts, but he's telling you the truth of how the how the uh, sausage is made, so to speak. Yeah, and, you know, I went on a little rant earlier, and he brings up a good point about the committee not being able to watch, you know, 30 different football games in their entirety. Um, so, you know, that makes sense. I'm not going to back down from saying that I think this whole thing's a, a charade and, and just a total joke, uh, the, the entire process itself. But, you know, that that is insightful that, yeah, that's a good point. They can't watch every single game. But there's got to be a better way to do this, in my opinion, and especially when he, he even says, you know, they're setting it up. That's why, that's why I don't watch these shows because, for one, the rankings last night – they, they matter to an extent because of the positioning, but they really don't matter because ultimately there's too many big games coming up these next two weeks that are going to shuffle the deck. But the fact that he said, like, yeah, they're they're setting this – why why move anybody because they're going to move themselves? Well, then they're intentionally not 
you know, you know what I'm saying? Like they're intentionally yeah. not making moves because of things that are likely to happen in a couple of weeks, which is forward thinking and makes sense. But it's also why people look at the current rankings and go, "What the hell? This makes no sense." So uh, you know that, that was that but was enlightening, but. But I, I just, I don't like. But this you also thing, can't man. assume things, right? Well, yes. Yeah, I mean, you yes. can't like when you're doing this, you can't assume that this is going to happen. You can guess that it's going to happen. You can probably, but if you're saying, well, we're doing this because more than likely somebody will do this for us next week. No, no, the rankings that your job is not to do the rankings based on what may happen between Michigan State and Ohio State or between Michigan and Ohio State. That's not their job. Their job is to rank them as it's come now. Mm -hmm. Not rank them through the future. Yeah. Because in the future, guess what? They're still back in that room eating a nice catered meal and finding out what BS to throw at us. And if you're looking at, uh, well, Michigan and Michigan State, well, they, or uh, let's say Ohio State, Michigan State are going to eliminate each other uh, or eliminate one, you know, whoever loses that game will get eliminated. I mean, what if that's like a, and I know that the odds of this are entirely low and, and it's not all that realistic, but let's just say, what if that's like a 10 7 game? You know, and both quarterbacks throw four interceptions and fumble it twice, and it's just an ugly, sloppy game. Does that come into account, or is it, well, it just mattered who won that game, and that's because... It only it, uh, comes into account if it allows them to to uh, prop up what they want right. you to believe. It, right, and that's where my issue lies. Is like, you're, like, he's just pointed out that all these schools are just positioned no matter what, basically. So yeah. if you win, like you're, it doesn't matter how you win or what you want or where you want or whatever. It doesn't matter. And, and unless said they it's, want it to. Yeah, unless they want it to. And that's where I have the, the issue, is that if there's a double standard, formula or not, uh, it... it it benefits some more than it does others. That's very clear that it does, and and I just don't think that's right. But yeah, there's nothing. You know. Yeah, you're kind of where it's out of our control. Blake, the only teams ahead of us, he's an Oklahoma State fan. I feel would beat us. Georgia, Bama, Ohio State would be a great game, but I mm -hmm. think we would have a shot at even them. K. Hustle, what's the pur purpose of rankings at the beginning of the season if all Power Fives are going to get credit for being automatically better? Than the entire group of fives. That Television we, uh, promotion, that's what it is. So when you watch the Virginia Tech-Ohio State game in week number one and it's number 12 versus number three, well, are you more likely to watch it if it was just Virginia Tech-Ohio State or number 12 Virginia Tech versus number three Ohio State? That's why the preseason rankings, I think, come into play more than anything. Eric Carr talking to John Kelly about John Kelly thinking that Oklahoma State should be a top four. Oklahoma State's not a top four. They lost to a four-loss Iowa State. Alabama... They're number two. They lost to unranked AM. And that was a and close so, game. And it was a close game. Uh, both of them were. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some others here as well. Uh, I guess that's about right. The college football rankings are an illusion. I already know that what they want and what they want to see. All right. That's well, true, though. Like, uh, who, whose loss is illusion's worse? Illusion's a great word. Yeah. I mean, you know, Oklahoma State did lose to Iowa State. It was a very close game all the way down to the very end, much like the, the game that you could counteract that with, uh, with A&M and Alabama. So Alabama gets credit for a – Texas Saint, oh, they were on the road and it was overtime and they get credit for that. But uh, Oklahoma State didn't get credit for like winning a tight game too. I mean, like I know that it's not exactly the same, but I don't know. I feel like uh, Oklahoma State's a little bit low for what they've proven this season. Well, they have a chance with what yeah. they have left, especially with Oklahoma in two weeks. They need Oklahoma to beat Iowa State. They need Baylor to beat Kansas State and Texas Tech and whoever they play in the Big 12 championship game coming up next. Former Baylor quarterback. Baylor sideline, uh, excuse me, color analyst uh, J.J. Joe. He's next. Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports.